So I guess the best place to start is what first caught your attention about snowmobiles that got you interested enough that you didn't want to buy one. Oh, well, everybody was having so much fun. They had, everybody had a machine. Uh, some people had two, three machines. And I wanted one too. And do you remember the first machine I had? I do. I think it was a ski do Olympic, maybe 69 or so. That yellow one. I don't remember that one. No? Because no. I know it, it was okay, but you, you thought it was a little tippy. So you were wanting something with more of a, a smoother ride and something more comfortable for the trail. Is this where I got the Audi Cat? It is, yeah. The 72 Cheetah. That was an Audi Cat? Yeah, with the 440. Oh, oh, that was a, yes, yes, yes. Yes, that was a wonderful machine. That was beautiful. It was fast. Uh, it wasn't as fast as Lee Richardson's machine, no. Sure. Uh, he had the garage just down the street from us, and he was very mechanical. And we went for a ride all over the place. Uh, the factory foreman were having their annual or monthly dinner, I don't know what it was, but it was out at uh, 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 a guy's uh, hunting shack or snowmobile shack or something. It was a pretty fancy cabin. And so Lee Richardson and I went down. Well, we had to go from our house up, way up, almost to the main main trail, and then come down. And there was a, uh, we, we followed the, uh, on the brook. It was all frozen over and everything. And he was in front of me. And my, mach my machine was a pretty big one. I think it was an Arctic cat then. Yes. A big Arctic cat. And then I sunk. And so I went to the back to try to lift it up, and I, I'm sinking down deeper. My head is just over the back of the bumper, the back seat. The of back me. of the seat. <laughs> and so I can't get out of there because I keep sinking lower. And finally, Lee Richardson comes back, pulls me out of there, gets the machine out, and we continued on our way down. And uh, it was a factory foreman at... I can't remember the name of his camp, but it was, uh, it was by the road anyway. Yeah. And uh, so Lee Richardson stopped there. Well, he worked at the factory, so I think he wanted to be a part of that. And uh, so he sat with a, with a, who was the boss? Oh, uh, Ames. Ames, yeah. Marshall Ames. I think and, so, yeah. And he sat at that end, in the camp, way at that end. And Lou just sat with him and talked with him while the rest of the guys, the rest of the former were setting up tables for their meal and stuff. And uh, and, and at the uh, the second command, Greenwood, I think. Okay. Anyway, he came and sat beside me. And I sat at the door when we first came in. So I'm watching all of this. The, the guys are all setting up tables and chairs and all this stuff, and Lee is back there with Marshall Ames. And uh, so anyway, I guess when they got ready to go, Lee and I left. Yeah. Because this is for foreman, factory foreman. And they had uh, maybe monthly to-dos, you know. Yeah. And he was a very competitive rider, too. Didn't he race motorcycles at one point, and he was able to carry some of those skills over to his snowmobile? And Marshall Ames? Uh, no, Lee. Lee Richardson. Yes, I think so. I think so. Well, he was a mechanic, so he people would bring their machines to him to fix for them. He had a garage there at Wallace. Yeah. And uh, I remember the Arctic Cat, big Arctic Cat, and... Brought my bride, my youngest son. You are my, my oldest son. Yes. <laughs> well, anyway, my youngest son was, I'm going to say, fourth or fifth grade. Yeah. And he liked that great big, great big machine. He loved that great big machine. And we were going to take it down to the snowmobile dealer and to trade it for another machine. And Brian was crying because now he liked that great big machine. He looked like a little, little tiny tot on a great big machine. 
And they said, don't, don't, don't cry now. Wait till we get to the, to the dealer and then cry. So you negotiate a better price? <laughs> yeah, I tried to negotiate a better price. Yeah. So I don't know if Brian did that or not, but <laughs> you and I and Brian went down and we bought something, traded that big Articat in there. And the Articat was great, except it was big, heavy, got stuck easy. And I think this was the 69 Panther we're talking about. Yes. Yeah. Big, with big Articat. With a gas tank in the back. Yes, yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. But that was a, I think, was it, was that the first machine we had? No, that was the third machine. And I think you traded that for a Polaris TX, a 76 or 77 Polaris that was, TX that was, that was 250. Fast. That was a fast. That was fast, too. Fast, fast, fast. Very fast. Yeah. Not as fast as Lee Richardson's machine, no. No. He had a fast machine. And a lot of, had, a lot of it had to do with him on it. He, he was a very skillful rider. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Try to think of some other snowmobile stories. Well, while you're thinking, I've got one, and I think she just pulled in here. Yeah. But um, I'll see if you, you remember this. But this was with the Panther we were just talking about, the 69 Panther yeah. with the gas tank in the back. Yeah. Sin single cylinder, so I don't know if, what, what, how many cc's it would have been, but that's not really part of the story. Yeah. But there was a big, over by, across by Daly's camp there, across the road, there was a long snow drift the plow had made, or a snow yeah. bank, I should say. Yeah. And you'd managed to get up on top of that, and you were going to try to ride the length of it. Yeah. And at about halfway across there, it started to get a little tippy. So you just kind of stepped off it, lifted your leg and your arm, and the thing rolled down two complete revolutions yeah. and landed on the ground. Right, uh, side, right side up? Right side up. <laughs> and the engine never skipped a beat, and all you did was just kind of push the windshield up because that had gotten flattened, but there wasn't a scratch or anything wrong with the rest of it. Yeah. Do, do you remember that? Or? <laughs> oh, I don't. <laughs> no. Remember, this is a long while ago. Yeah, this is 50 years ago. Yeah, I, I'm practically 91 years old, so yeah. my memory is, is not as good. It's not as good as it was when I was only 90. Yeah. 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 And you guys talk about snowmobiles, which that was many years ago. Yes, yeah, so that was over 50 years ago. Yeah. Now, do you remember the, the ride-ins and the group rides we used to do? We'd end up at a restaurant many times. Well, then we'd, we'd start out just either us and Pages or us and Richardson's. And as we'd go, we'd meet up with other people. And now, now they're part of the convoy. And then we meet up with other convoys and we join theirs. And by the end of the day, there's dozens and dozens of people. And we'd maybe stop in the middle of the day for, with a campfire and cook some hot dogs. And then later on in the day for supper, We'd end up at a restaurant, usually either the Northland or the Norton restaurant, and there would be just dozens and dozens, and I don't know how many snowmobilers, but the place was just jammed with snowmobilers. Yeah. Well, snowmobiling was big. Yeah. Up, up in the woods up here, and we were in the, in the at the, the end out in the woods, as far about as far as you can go up the, the northeast corner. We were pretty remote. Yeah. Uh, Vermont. Yeah, we lived. We were. Well, it was a small town, and we were four miles outside of the small town. Yeah. So we were pretty remote. Yeah. Yeah. So we had to. We had to go quite a ways before we got on the trail. Yes. But the trails were nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, remember, I remember mostly Jackie with her machine, and and we would stop for a break, and she would go up against a tree, the bumper against a tree. Now, there's a ski on each side of the tree. Now, as I try to pull that back, the skis dig in. <laughs> Fifth, sixth grade, maybe. Yeah, if that, Brian. And, uh, my brother Brian, yeah. If he was that, yeah. And, and he was on that, he liked that great big machine. The 69 Panther, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so we're going to take it down to the dealer and trade it for another brand new machine. And uh, so he started crying because we're going to trade in that big Panther that that he used and I told him don't don't cry now wait till we get to the dealer <laughs> so we get a bad deal <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah but he could he could really ride that thing oh, for yeah. a little kid probably seven or eight years old that the big 69 panther he never got stuck yeah there was a, the thing was a tank but he could make that handle and he could go just about anywhere he wanted to with it yeah and it was a, a, a uh, a log seat, so you could put two or three people on there. Yes. But he would be on there by himself. His feet didn't touch the running board. Yeah. No. Yeah, and he could make that go up and down and over and under and yeah. fast yeah. and corners, everything. He, and, he could. And, and if we go ahead a few years, uh, they were delivering a new machine. 
Yes. To the house. I don't remember what it was. It was a Polaris Gemini. Yeah, it was brand, brand new, maybe 1980, the first year they had the blue Polaris. I yeah, think that was, was 1980. Anyway. And, and Brian, with his buddy from Canaan, with Bobby, were there playing. And, and we, we had to go in the house to sign the papers for the new machine. We would get out, the new machine was gone. We had no idea where it was. <laughs> Bobby had talked Brian into taking it for a ride. <laughs> and I think they went to town with it. Yeah, it was like four miles away. Yeah, yeah. They took the trails all the way into town. Yeah. My God. Yeah. They wanted to test it, yeah. make sure it's all right. Yeah. But that that was a nice machine too, that Gemini. That would go just about anywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. A long track and yeah. not a lot of low-end torque, so you're not going to churn up the snow. Yeah. You could, you could, that was very agile. You could break trail with that. And yeah. You were, you were an expert rider too. Uh. And I, we didn't want to go for a ride too much unless you came with us. Yeah. In case we got into trouble. Yeah. Jack, Jackie and I. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we had some we had some good rides and those rides were uh you would stop on a trail and then some other people would be coming along and they'd stop on a trail. Pretty soon there'd be about twenty machines there. We'd all be standing around talking, telling snow stories, drinking a beer, having a cigarette or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and then we'd all get on, and I'd, I'd wait until everybody got their machines going and started, and then I would just turn the key. Yes, with that electric start on that cheetah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like that part. That was sweet. Yeah, uh, yeah. you weren't—you didn't have to pull on those the cord like everyone else. You yeah. just let them all get started, and then you just turn your key. Yeah, uh, yeah. That was nice. I love that. But, but uh, they'd all be going, and then Jack and I would be. She she rode on the machine with me. I don't think I don't think we took two machines at that time. No, at that time we had that seventy two cheetah. That was the primary machine. We had a, another machine, but we <coughs> we had a sled behind it. It looked like a, a yellow dog sled. Oh, oh yes, yes. And Brian would sit in the middle of it, and I would stand behind like a a dog musher, like uh, a. Uh, uh, it's to fold down flat. Yes. For storage, uh, you could lift it up and stand at the back there. That was, that was nice. Most people wanted to stand at the back. Yeah, that was fun. And yeah. we'd go, the four of us, the, the cheetah pulling it, you and Mom on the front on the cheetah, and yeah. Brian and I in that sleigh, and we'd go yeah. go all day like that. Yeah. But Brian was in the, in the sleigh, and you were standing in the back? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the person in the back had a lot to do because you had to steer it from the back. Yeah, a lot of body English involved, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 Of course, we had a lot of snow then. Yeah. Uh, by, by Christmas, we had probably four feet of snow. Yeah. And now, Christmas, that's about the time we got our first snow this year. And uh, and uh, it is middle of March, and we do have snow, but nothing like what we used to have. Yeah. You know, you know, when I was a little kid, we had snow that went up halfway up the window. Yeah. And we couldn't see out the window because we weren't tall enough to look over the top half of the window. That's that, a lot of snow. That was a lot of snow. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you remember going to, um, I think it might have been out in Yogi Carrier's cornfield in the wintertime. I think they had some drag races there a couple of years. Oh, yeah. Do you remember going to that? Yeah. Big crowd. Yeah. Big crowd. Yeah. Yeah. And I was on in Newport and I was... It was the beginning of the snowmobile season. The beginning of snowmobile season. This would have been late 60s, I think. Another guy and I, I was with the Lions Club, and another guy and I were in charge of a snowmobile deal. Setting up a snowmobile race? Yeah, a snowmobile race and, and snowmobile. It was just a whole bunch of stuff. Well, I bought my rep bar. I was going to handle the music. We got speakers and stuff to have music going on because if it's a race the machines take off through the woods and they're gone for an hour yeah so they come back somewhere else kind of a cross-country type of race yeah where they yeah. go out on a trail and they're timed yeah yeah and uh, those trails were usually very tricky too and so the, the machines wouldn't come back like five six coming in at once it'd be one another one pretty soon another one when they go to go stuck like <laughs> take off finish the race yeah yeah uh, but I, I didn't know what to expect, and I had the music. 
and I, and I had a speaker and all this all kinds of stuff and the music going. And the machines are all gone. They, 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 they line them up and take off um, uh, 30 seconds apart or something. Yeah. And I'm there and I got all the music. <laughs> and there's no machines. They're all gone. <laughs> I, I guess I didn't realize it was a race. Yeah. I thought it was just so we will get together. More of a gathering, a social gathering, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then when they came back, they came back way at the top of the hill. Yeah. And so I went way down. There wasn't a hell of a lot I could do about that. Yeah. 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 But I, I never was involved too much in the organization of these snowmobile things. Yeah. I was with the Lions Club, and, and we were involved in a lot of organizations. But uh, not with snowmobiles. It's just that one time, and then, and they were all around there. And then one at a time they'd leave, and uh, uh, an hour later, or half an hour later, they'd start coming back from way up at the top of the mountain. From the other direction, yeah. they did. Must have done a big loop, I imagine. Yeah, a big loop somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So I, I didn't. I wasn't involved too much. And that's the only. That's the only thing I was involved with. with the club part of it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but the club had pegs at the Northland. Yes. And Jackie had suppers and things. Jackie and I would go to that. But we took our car. Yeah. It was uh, going alone at night. It was kind of tricky to, because the trail was deep in the woods. Yeah. To get down to Canaan. Yeah. We were four miles out of Canaan on Lake Wallace. Yeah. Uh, that, that was a beautiful place in the summer, but not that great a place in the yeah, winter. It's pretty remote in the winter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, do you have memories of using the snowmobiles to do ice fishing? We used to have a shanty out on our lake a few years, and also on Lake Averill a few miles away, we had a shanty there. And yeah, yeah. We used to snowmobile to get to it, and yeah. it was as much a social thing, that fishing shanty, as it was fishing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was It was warm because you'd, you'd, you'd dig a hole and put your, your, your line in, it was on a little tippy thing, and they would just sit and watch it. Yeah. So it was, we'd be all sitting around watching our hole with our thing. And I don't believe anybody ever, any fish ever touched our line, because I don't think that ever went down. But yeah. other places, once in a while, it would go down. There were fish that were being caught. Yeah. In the, in the winter, on the ice. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember different ones would come over, and people we knew from another shanty down halfway across the lake would come on their snowmobile and visit us, or we'd go visit them. And, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And we made a day of it. Yes. You know, we were in one spot, we were supposed to be fishing. We still made a day of snowmobile. Yeah, and we'd have friends over, and we'd all be out there and yeah. cooking hot dogs. and. Yeah. They had a little wood stove in there. I think there were years, the fishing scene, I think, was more of a social thing. There were, I think there were years we never even put a hole in the ice. It was more just a, like a little camp to have on a lake. Oh, yes. To snowmobile too. After, after the, the Northland was a the place where uh, people met. They had dances, dinners, meetings. Everything, everything went on at the Northland. Yeah. Big hotel. Yeah, and... Uh, I don't know what I was going to say about that. Well, that's all right. Well, I've got a memory of one of those. I don't know. I don't remember if it was the Northland or the Norton Restaurant, but those were the two places we used to go when we'd go to a restaurant. Yeah. And I remember since there were so many snowmobilers coming to accommodate more people, instead of having like the typical restaurant set up where every family's at a table, they had big, long tables. Oh, yeah. Like cafeteria style. Yeah. yeah. And and since everyone, even if you weren't with that party, you knew them, or since you're snowmobilers, you don't care. You just, everyone's yeah. happy to sit at a long table. Oh, yeah. Snowmobilers, everybody was the same family. Yeah. And they had all the jackets in a pile on the other end. And, <laughs> yeah. And this one time, I don't remember if this, it was the Northland or the Norton restaurant, but they had a, a separate cafeteria style table for the kids. That was a kid table. So it was a whole line of kids at that table. Yeah. And then the adults were all at, at other tables, yeah. and I remember, you know, you and mom were saying to the waitress or waiter, you know, uh, order this and this for those two boys over there, and you know, bring it to them when it's ready. Yeah. And we were having fun with the kids, and you guys are having fun with the adults, and yeah. and oh yeah, and it was a different time, and it, so you know, different from today. But I remember the drinks were flowing back then, the way they probably wouldn't today, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, the 
It was a, uh, we lived out in the country, community out in the country. So we, 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 we did a lot of things, the community together. Yes. Uh, there was the snowmobile ride-ins. We'd go somewhere. We'd all ride together. And there'd be a group of machines going on. Yeah. Yeah, it was a very social experience, the yeah, snowmobiles. In the summer we'd do the same thing. We, uh, we'd all meet it somewhere and have a drink or two, maybe a meal. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, we had, we, had a, we had a good time. It was fun living out there. Of course, we were four miles out of town. So, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, pretty remote. <laughs> but it was wonderful. Yeah, well, we, we lived on the lake, so yeah. in the summer we were pretty busy. A lot of people would stop by to go swimming. Yeah, boating and water skiing and... Yeah. Yeah. It was all. It was an all year thing. Yeah. We had stuff to do in the in the summer and in the winter and and across the road from us there were miles and miles of woods. Oh yeah. So that we we would, Brian and I would build forts up there and go hunting up there and and if we weren't doing that we were fishing or water skiing or boating or or yeah. snowmobiling or ice skating in the winter snowshoeing. Next town to us was was on a pond that was about four miles away. Uh, more than that, yeah. More, I think maybe fifteen or twenty miles. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, it was quite a distance down there. Yeah, and and people had places all along in the woods there. Where they would call their camps. Yeah. yeah. But we had we had fun with snowmobiling. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these were Im impromptu. We just get out and we know we'd meet somebody, some other machines, and we'd go with them to wherever they were going. How far away was Norton? I don't know, five miles, six miles. That's all? Yeah. But on the snowmobile trail on those old machines, it took a little while to get there. Maybe, a little, I don't know, six or seven. I don't know. We'd, we had to go up over, what was it? Uh, there was a mountain we'd have to go up over to get to Norton. What the heck was the name of it? <laughs> this is a long, many years ago. Yeah. But I remember that, and I don't even know if the trail is in the same place as it used to be, but there was a big mountain we'd have to go up over. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I drawn a blank on what that was. Yeah, I, I can't remember it. Uh, taking our turn at the bottom, waiting until it was our turn, and then we scoot up. Yes. Yeah. And hope we made it. Yes. Yeah, there was a couple of spots there where you, it was one lane and you'd go up a real steep hill, almost like a, not a snow bank because it wasn't plowed, but it was just a steep bank. It was a, it was a hill. Yeah. Very big hill. And each person would go one at a time and you'd have to have some momentum. And if you didn't have momentum, you weren't going to make it. And there was a few that... Yeah. That didn't make it, and we'd, they'd have to be helped by the others. And yeah, and there was always others along the trail. They had to hide to, to bad spots. There were people there in case they needed. Yes. Needed help. Yeah. yeah. And you're right. It was a very social thing, and like we'd start off many days either just the four of us, or the four of us and our neighbors, either the Pages or the Richardsons, yeah. and we'd meet up with some other people. And then we then now we're now we're a group, and then we meet up with some other people, and now it's an even bigger group. And yeah. and then by lunch, there's probably twenty or thirty people, and we stop and cook some hot dogs on a little fire in the woods. And oh yeah, we always had a we would have bring food with us to cook hot dogs, hamburgers, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, I remember it always being a very jovial uh, situation, everyone's laughing and joking and having a good time. And it was just really, a really fun environment. Oh, yeah. And the, the adults were laughing and joking and the kids were playing and having fun. And well, snowmobiling was a great method to get families together. Yes. You went out and you didn't know who you were going to meet up with. Yeah. And then you don't be a, a part of the group. Yeah. And you make a lot of new friends. If they were from Cobra or somewhere, we, they, we, <laughs> we stopped there and we, we would be part of the group. Yeah. They, they, they'd just take us all in. And if we had a group going, strangers would come to stop, they'd be part of the group. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was a, building was a, a great thing for that because yeah. you were out there in the woods way out. And uh, so when you meet somebody, well, we got to stop and talk. <laughs> yes, exactly. You can say hi to them. Hey, you're doing the same thing we are. Yeah, yeah. And if even if you didn't know them, now you're instant friends because you're enjoying the same thing together. Yeah. And, it, and everyone's yeah. having a good time and is, mm -hmm. is always laughing and joking. And yeah. 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 And yeah, we made a lot of new friends and, and get um, deep in relationships with existing friends. And maybe people you may be only knew casually get to know them on the trail and now you're better friends with them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a real unifying experience. It was. Yeah. And remember, Canaan was a small community. Yes. That was a big that was a big center, the center of uh, everything. 
Yes. And uh, Norton was the next place, and that was 20 miles away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in the summer, in the winter, fall and spring, uh, Canaan was, we would stop, if, uh, if we wanted to meet somebody, we'd stop in the Northland, have a drink. Yeah. And it'd be, we'd be automatically in with a bunch of people. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and then and the same with same on the trail. You, you'd, you'd stop to have a drink, and people would stop. And be, you'd have people from all over the place, because there a lot of people from down country would trailer their machines up. Yes, people would come up from Massachusetts, yeah, and they'd yeah. stay at the motel down the road from us. Yeah. And we'd snowmobile with them sometimes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, snowmobile was a great method of getting people together. Yeah. Because a lot of them was, were, were either friends or families of the Richardsons. Yeah. They would come up from Massachusetts because the Richardsons were from down there. Yeah. And, of course, I don't know, word got out. I don't know if they invited us or we, or I don't know what happened. But we'd end up with them that morning and we'd ride the trails with them all day. And there would be a bunch of us. And, yeah. Yeah. and they were up from Massachusetts and they were enjoying it. And I remember they had most of them had scorpions. The, a lot of those people, because I know Richardsons in the early days had scorpions before they had cats. Yeah. And a lot of their their friends and relatives from Massachusetts brought scorpions up from Mass too. Yeah, yeah. But what was the, the the big fast big machine I had? The cheetah, the seventy two cheetah, I think. Two cylinder. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and and electric start. Yes. When they they all we'd be all done talking, it was time everybody would get the machines all going. And fun of the machines are all going to like, turn to keep <laughs> ready, ready to go. Yeah. yeah, it's true. The back in those days, not many, not as many people had electric starts. Yeah. There was only a handful of them. Yeah. So it was, it, not one. Of, I don't know if I'd go so far as to say it a rarity, but it, there there weren't many people with that. So when oh. you when oh. you just turn it, it's like wow, look at that guy. <laughs> yeah, I, that was a cheetah, you said. Yeah, seventy two cheetah four forty. That was a fast machine. That was. But not as fast as Lee Richardson's machine. No, he could go. I, I don't know what it was. He had a Panther 440, like a 73 or 74, I think. It wasn't a big machine. No. Well, uh, then he had those Scorpions, too, though, before that. And he yeah. could make those Scorpions yeah. go, too. Some of those were 440s, I think. Yeah. But they, they were smaller machines. Yes. With bigger engines. Or yes. Yeah, because those Scorpions were physically a little smaller than that Panther he had later. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember coming back, getting back down to the lake. And we had to come down the lake quite a ways to get to the motel. And then from there, uh, I was walking distance to our camp, yeah. our house. And uh, you, didn't, you didn't walk it more than once a day, I'll tell you. <laughs> it, was, it was quite a ways, but still it was within walking distance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and we spent a lot of time together. And then they... And then they stopped at our house with a bunch of their friends from South Country. Yes. <laughs> they were from down country. You know? Yeah. And that little motel, last time we were by, it's nothing. It's, there's no science. It's, it, everything is there, but there's nobody living there. Yeah, I don't think it's in operation anymore. No, no. Everything, like you said, everything's still there, but I don't think it's in operation. Yeah, uh, That's it, too bad. It looked kind of strange seeing, seeing nothing there. Yeah. After all those years where that well. Of course, with the Wallace Pond, that was the only business. It was a, a motel, a, a gas station, a gas station, a, a, and a country store. store. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of those country stores don't exist anymore. A lot of that, that just I don't think it's sustainable. And and I think in the eighties. I don't remember. Some government agency, I think, came around and wanted to see if those tanks were leaking. <laughs> and a lot of them were. And a small business like that can't afford to replace a tank. So a lot of them just did away with, well, we don't sell yes, gas anymore. Yeah, so they stopped yeah. selling gas. And then once they stopped selling gas, the business wasn't sustainable yeah. anymore. They were, they were, and a lot they, of those country stores. Big, giant tanks. 300 gallons. Yeah, probably. I don't know how many. Gallons, I don't know. Big, big, big tanks. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that put a lot of them out of business. Maybe not like right away, but once they stopped selling gas, it just, the business wasn't sustainable anymore. Yeah. And when they, the, the big gas trucks would come to fill them up, they were they were away from the building. Yes. So they they had they take the uh, cover off from the ground to fill it to fill it up. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, you didn't see the tanks. They were all on the ground. Yeah, it's all on the ground. And I have a memory, speaking of gassing up, uh, at the motel and the country store and gas station all in one that we was down the road from us. 
we had a, a steel five gallon gas can and rather than keep it at the house we just kept it over there in their garage and whenever we wanted to get gas we'd take that out we put a, a, a container of oil into two stroke oil in it we'd fill it up and we'd gas up the sled put it back in their garage we just kept it there it was simpler than trying to cart that that five gallon jug back and forth to the house we just kept it there all winter and many times the richardson's and us were the only families at Wallace Point. Well, no, down at the end of the lake. LeMay's, yeah. LeMay's the three down. families were the only ones at the lake in the winter. Yeah. 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 So we, we, we all knew each other, even though we couldn't see each other. Yeah. Yeah. We were uh, less than half a mile from... From each place, yeah. From each place, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did a lot of things together. We had a lot of fun with them. Yeah. And the, speaking of the Lays, they had a scorpion. We, I don't think we rode with them very much, but they had a scorpion there for a year or two. Richardson's? No, a Lemay's. Lemay's. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, those were the days. Talking about 50 years ago in the early 70s. Yeah. Anything else you can think of? Or? I was just thinking of living alone out there in the the woods, so to speak. We, I don't think we would do that today. No, probably not. No, we, we had the store there, yeah. but that was a motel. And then so people coming from Canaan to Norton, and Norton you were going to head south or north into Canada or south to Arabon. Yes. Uh, so you would stop to get gas. And people came by almost not constantly but you know quite a bit of time that, that was the main road but but we didn't see too many people didn't stop to see us <laughs> yeah you know unless it was it was planned because you know it's a long ways to go and find there's nobody home yeah yeah you would want to call ahead and make sure they're going to be there because yeah. you're right it's a ways to drive yeah. to have them not be there yeah yeah but we had card parties yes we had we had a lot of a lot of things going on there. Yeah, play cards and, and, and board games and pretty fancy beach too. Yes, yeah. And, and how long was that deck? The, the walkway out to the oh, thirty six feet. The dock. It would go out thirty six feet, and then it was L shaped. Yeah, yeah. And then that was another 10, 12 feet, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An L shaped and dock. We, yeah. And that had, was nice in the summer. Yeah, we had a big boat rack. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, how many, how, uh, 95 horsepower? 65. 55? 65. 65. Six, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, it was enough to pull you guys. Oh, yeah. We pl did plenty of water skiing on that. Yeah. And we had that boat rack. So, and, and if we had been boating at night, uh, <laughs> partying in the day, you could see because the boat would have been in there, cranked up, but it'd be sideways. Yeah, it'd be all crooked in the rack, yeah. <laughs> In fact, I I shouldn't say this, but I put it in there crooked a couple of times myself, partying with my friends. Yeah, and Brian was pretty young. Yes. And we got back one time, and he had a bunch of his kids, fourth or fifth graders, and he'd taken them out for a boat ride, and they went exploring. Yes. <laughs> he didn't, I, don't, I don't know, did they, I don't know if they put the drain plug back in or not. Oh, I don't know, but I know one time I forgot to put the plug in, and I lowered it down, and I saw so I was filling up with water, so I cranked it back up again. Yeah, let it drain out and then put the plug in drain. Yeah, and there's a good story about Brian, too, though. I don't know if this is the one you were thinking of, but the, the other side of the lake was Quebec, Canada, and there had been someone had graduated that had a camp on the other side of the lake. Oh, and Jesus. No, um, Fauteur. Oh, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So you, I don't know where I was, but you and Mom and Brian and, and I don't know if it was Bobby or Jeff, but had been over at that party, at that graduation party, having a good time over there. And, of course, now it's getting late and you come back. And everyone goes to bed. Well, Brian and either Jeff or Bobby, they get back up and they took the the small boat over, the rowboat, back over to that party <laughs> and party with them until dawn. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, he was in high school at this point. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we had we had two or three boats, didn't we? We had three boats. Yeah, the the bigger boat, the water ski boat. We had a, a aluminum rowboat with a little five and a half horsepower. Uh, motor on it, a little outboard, and then we had a little sailboat. Yeah. Well, the sailboat was that full boat. Oh, no, we had that too. Yeah, the full boat was like that um, kayak. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I guess we had four boats, yeah. Yeah. And treated the full boat for a motorcycle. The dirt bike, yes. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Those were the days. Well, we were young then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, those were good days. Yeah, we, we had a we had a good time. We were out by ourselves, but we were very seldom by ourselves. Yes. Because we, we everybody moved. They, they, they were in Canaan. Canaan was in a very big town, and so you were always going to see somebody, and somebody was coming to see you, you know, so... We were never alone, no matter how far. We were, we were four miles out of town. From yeah, Canada. as remote as we were, we were very social. We always had people over, or, and people we would go visit, too, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we weren't really lonely at all. Oh, that was, we always remember that. Well, was fun. Yeah, yeah, I'll never forget that. That was a great place to grow up. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. Anything else, sir? <laughs> I was thinking about the shelf. The desk I made for you in your bedroom. Yes. You had no, no, you had dresser, but no shelf. So I, I made a shelf. I hung it from a rope from the ceiling. Yes. Yeah. One corner of it was suspended by a rope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. It had kind of a nautical theme going. Yeah. That rope. Yeah. That big rope. The, 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 it was a piece of plywood, but it was steady. Yeah. It was hooked to the wall, nailed to the wall, but where it stuck out, there was nothing to hang on to. So I, I, Hooked a rope to the ceiling. Yeah, I remember that. Big knot underneath it. Yeah, big hemp rope, probably an inch in diameter. Oh yeah. With a huge knot on the underside of the desk to hold it up. Yeah. Yeah, it had a like, kind of a nautical theme. I'll have to find see if I can find a, nim a picture of that and put it on there. Yeah, you were pretty pretty happy when I called you in, and you saw. <laughs> yeah. Asked you, I want a desk. I don't have a desk. Nothing to write on. And when you came in and saw that, it was well, it was. Eight feet long, I think. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's wide, two feet wide. Maybe not quite as wide as this desk, but almost, yeah. yeah Maybe yeah. two, two and a half feet wide. And, yeah. yeah. It's a good place for you. Yeah, and I had a, similar to what you have here against the wall, it was, it was taller and it was different, but the same idea as that, so I had all kinds of things in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was a nice little okay. workstation there. Yeah. yeah. I used to assemble those... Um, those Ravel models, you know, the plastic car models, yeah. you take, open the box and there's all the pieces and now you assemble it yeah. you've got a car model. And um, mine always looked like, the, you know, an amateur had put it together, but or I had a cousin, remember Dookie? Yeah. He, he would do models and he would paint them nice and they would shine and they'd look perfect. And oh. mine would have like, you, you're using that, that, uh, that glue. And I'd have glue on my fingers, and it had fingerprints on the windshield and <laughs> fingerprints on the body of the car. And then I'd try oh, yeah. to paint over that, and it just it looked like yeah. a real he hack didn't job. Make as many models as he did, though. No, he made a lot of them because he was an expert at that. Yeah, he was really good at that. His always looked nice, and mine always looked like they came from a junkyard. Oh, well, but. It looks like you had fun building them. Oh yeah, I had a good time doing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but yeah, he he really had a skill for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we enjoyed the snowmobiling to beat hell. Yeah. My God, I don't know. I don't know if there was one day we we went by it that we didn't go out on the snowmobile somewhere to, to something or just yeah. for a ride. We got our money's worth in the winter. Yeah. And we had plenty of places to ride because I mean there's a little, some space in the backyard to ride, but once you're on the lake, yeah. there's plenty of place to ride, and then you can go off the lake to different places and ride. Yeah. And you know you you could access the trail from the lake too. So once the ice was frozen, we had all kinds of options. Oh yeah, and and to to go somewhere, we would go off the back lawn onto the lake. Yeah, and and then we could go wherever we wanted. But other than that, we were the snowmobiling was mostly from our house to the lake, and yeah. that wasn't very far. It was pretty pretty good size back lawn. You could be we had all you had a like a racetrack on it. Yes. Oh, speaking of stories about snowmobiles on the lake, I'm sure as I tell this, it'll come back to you. But this is that brand new Polaris Gemini, so this would have been 80, 81 or so. Um, and we had that fishing shanty out there. And we'd had a whole bunch of rain, and then it froze. And in that, in that rain, I think there was a lot of wind because we looked out and we could see our fishing shanty wasn't in the same place. You could see the <laughs> the indentations in the ice where it rolled three or four times, and it was on its side. So... So I went out there on the snowmobile one morning to check it out because I think it was February vacation or something. 
and looked it over and said, yeah, that's pretty well damaged, but we fixed it. We just replaced the two by fours inside. But so anyway, from there, um, I decided I'm going to go visit my friend, Carolyn. Remember the Hurleys? Yeah. So I was going to go visit her. So I crossed, went across the lake over to her place and I'm just about to go up onto the land where her place is. And I'm start, I start going through the ice. And, and then I, I'm like, uh-oh, I'm going through the ice. So I jumped off and I started trying to swim and I realized I'm banging my knees on the ice. So what happened was all that rain that had been like a big, a huge puddle in there and then it iced over. So there's about a foot of water that's iced over on top of the main ice, which is several feet th thick. Uh, so I, that's what I was going through. So I wasn't in any immediate danger of like going way down, but I got myself good and wet and it was cold and windy. What, were they and, home? Yeah, they watched the whole thing and they're going, uh-oh. Yeah. So they yeah. thankfully, I went up there and they had a change of clothes for me and they had some of Tom's um, hip waders. So they got me rigged up in that and I went down and there was some ice fishermen nearby and ice shanties and they came and they helped me pull it out and get it onto solid ice and uh, up to the edge there where we could get it in a pickup and bring it home and let it thaw out. And then we, we had it in the garage for a day or two and then we just uh, started pulling the crank and, and water started pumping out of the engine and we yeah. gave, it, <laughs> gave it another d day or two to dry. And we've started and fired up just like nothing ever happened. And we had that sled for quite a few years, and it yeah. didn't seem like there was any damage done to it. Uh, that's the ways that God takes care of people that take care of experts. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but the other thing, too, is mom was working. I think she was working at the florist at the time, and you were working, too. So uh, I'm alone at home. I think Brian was with me. Yeah. But we're doing all of this, you know, by ourselves and i think i'd called you to let you know what was going on and you couldn't really come home and i i think you were pretty stressed out about it yeah. <laughs> but uh did you remember me calling you on the phone with news about that or having gone through the ice and oh i hope i don't remember that <laughs> yeah because <laughs> i know you weren't too happy <laughs> about it surprised me a bit yeah <laughs> thinking about it though no, because we had no one to play with yeah and so we 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 played uh made we just used the area. There was so much, too many things to do in the area. We could do it alone. Yeah. So it's very easy to, to get yourself in trouble when you're way out in the area like that. It's true, yeah. 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 But we still, I still think that's the best place we ever lived. Oh, for sure. Good evening and welcome to the podcast. I'm really glad you're here. We're going to do something a little different tonight. We're going to have an Amsoil Oilathon. Now, what is an oilathon? You might ask. <laughs> well, it's an opportunity for us to do some Q and A uh, and to learn about Amsoil products, especially as they pertain uh, to snowmobiles, modern and vintage. We're also going to talk a little bit about applications for cars, trucks, motorcycles, boats, things like that. But it's mostly going to be about snowmobiles. Now, before we get into all of that, I want to make sure that everything is working properly. So, if you can see my face and hear my voice, I'm going to ask you to leave a comment. Uh, let me know where you're viewing this from and whether you are a first-time viewer of the podcast or a regular viewer of the podcast. To our first-time viewers, we thank you so much for checking us out. Hope you have a good time with us tonight and hope you decide to circle back here in one week's time on either Sunday night or Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time uh, for our podcast. We have something in this slot at 8 p.m. every Sunday night, and we also do a, a regular podcast every Thursday night. Hope you will join us for all of these things. To our regular viewers who are here week after week and season after season, thank you so very much. You you guys are the ones who make this possible, and we really, really appreciate that. Now, let's not uh, waste any more time here. Let's bring Rob on. Rob, how are you doing tonight? I think winter finally showed up. Finally. <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, to it's our viewers, I let it. I've seen green grass on my front lawn. Unreal, huh? it, It's been a crazy winter. Yeah, I'm glad you finally have some rideable snow over there. And to our viewers, too, if you finally have some rideable snow, please leave us a comment and let me know uh, where you are and how much snow you got. Um, see, we've got a comment coming in. Oh, good. Our good friends, Stacy and Art Fosler from Platte Kill, New York, regular viewers. They've been watching from the very beginning, and they say everything looks and sounds good. And Stacy and Art, did you get any snow there in Platte Kill, New York? Enough to do some riding on. Uh, love to hear from you. But... Um, yeah, well, we're waiting for some more comments. Um, uh, Rob here is a regular on the podcast. He's, if you're a, re a regular viewer of these podcasts, Rob is no stranger to you. Uh, and also, it's also no secret, as you can tell by his shirt and his hat and the banner behind him, he is the Amsoil guy. Uh, and he's going to be uh, answering questions for us and explaining in great detail all of the different products that are available to us as snowmobilers, both vintage riders, modern uh, riders, and everything in between. 
Um, and before we get into that, we've got a couple of quick questions. Stacy and Art say no snow yet. Uh, George Jackson says been riding in Wisconsin for about a month. Wonderful. Well, I'm glad someone somewhere is getting some snow. Well, cool. So, Rob, if you're ready, I'm going to put you full screen. If you can uh, just kind of take us down the path and tell us about AMSOIL. Okay. I've been involved with AMSOIL for oh, 40 years. Back in 1979, I was racing a 79 SRX Yamaha, and a guy from New York State, Tim Bender, came up and said, you're having a lot of problems following plugs. I said, yeah. I had a 15 to 1 oil mixture. Before I get out the starting line, I'm following a plug. He said, try AMSOIL. He said, try that 100 to 1. I said, 100 to 1, I'll blow my motor up. He says, no, I'm running my race machine at 300 to 1. You try it at 100 to 1, that's what it's warranty at, and you'll have more performance, more horsepower, and a longer engine life. So he, later that day, he gave me a tank of his fuel. I put it in the machine. First time I ever made it to the finals. It did make a difference in the performance, how much better the machine run, and the more horsepower I had. And at 100 to 1, I didn't foul any plugs. Now, this was a product right here that we were using at the time, Amsoil Saber Oil. One of these bottles, eight ounces to five gallons of gas. It's perfect for me at the cottage. It doesn't matter if it's a chainsaw, weed eater, my 200 Black Max, a 50 Merc on the back of the pontoon, but on the 99. Everything runs the same oil mixture with Amsoil, 101. They came out with this product in 1972, and all the oil manufacturers say, you're going to get sued, you're going to get sued. It's the same product we have in the market now. Outperforms them. Everything else out, out there in the market burns cleaner, gives you more horsepower, more performance. Then after that, Snowbill started becoming popular. Amsoil came out first with our injector oil. Yes. And it can be used for Snowbill, boats, anything that's injector. You can also run it at a premix. And this is what we had for a number of years until Bombardier came out with uh, exhaust system, the Rave engine. And with the Rave engine, you needed an oil that was a 92% no ash. Otherwise, the ash in the oil, ash was also a lubricant, the ash in the oil would plug up the exhaust valves, they would stop working, and you had less power out of the machine. The Rave engine with the exhaust valves performed more, more performance out of it if you kept them clean. So Amsoil came out with the Interceptor. It is 98% no ash. So it's perfect for all the new machines out there now. You put it in the machine, you know it's an increase in horsepower, more performance, because of less friction, less drag. Amsoil is a slipperier type oil than the petroleum oils on the market. By cutting down friction and drag, you get more horsepower, more performance, and longer engine life. And that's the main thing you want out of your equipment. Longer engine life, more performance, and everybody likes more performance when out there in the machine. If Absolutely. You have two or three buddies all got the same machines. If all three of them have an 800 and the one guy's running Amsoil, you'll notice the one with the Amsoil, no smoke coming out of it, more performance, more horsepower, and a little faster going down the lake than the other guys. Yeah. And the machines aren't cheap now. You can't no. buy a snowmobile for $10,000. Some yeah. of my friends are paying over 30000 for a snowmobile now. And you don't want to put a cheap quality oil in that high performance engine because it needs extra protection. So that's another one of our products to have. And the other snowmobile oil that we like mainly for racing application, I'll try it this way, Dominator. Dominator is not a 92% no ash oil. It will foul the valves. Um, I personally run it in my own machine because the interceptor will give you 5 to 6% increase in horsepower. This gives you almost 7. So it does give you a little bit more horsepower. But I've been stuck on a trail where it was washboard for six, seven miles where the groomer hadn't gone down yet. And before I got down that seven miles, I had to stop and change one of the valves, one of the spark plugs, because it did foul up. Um, but it does give me more horsepower, more performance, and that's why I run it. Yeah. But I should have been running the Interceptor, and that's what all my friends run in theirs. Yeah, so Amsoil has a complete line of products for all the applications for snowmobiles. Yes, the four strokes, we have the four strokes also. Zero W40. If you're out and it's 50 below zero, this pours at 58 below zero. It'll make it run cooler, more performance, more horsepower, just like all the other products. Yeah, so we have them all covered. Yeah. Um, my, last week we were talking about one of our other products is chain case. A lot of the snowmobiles, people lift up the back end of the machine, they rev it up first thing in the morning because they think their rubber track is frozen in the snow. No, you're running a 75W90 gear loop in your chain case. And if it's 20 below, what do you think that gear oil is like? It's just like honey. That's what's making your belt burn first thing in the morning. If you put the Amsoil chain case in it, it'll pour at 58 below zero. So the chain case won't be, the oil will not be in there thick. 
Have you ever seen somebody tear their chain case apart in the wintertime and they got to change the oil? At the races, I see it all the time. People's got to change the gears for the size of oval track they're going to be racing on. They have a spoon in there. They're scraping the oil out like it's honey. <laughs> the Amsoil, they pour it out, it runs all over the place on them. It makes a big difference by having a lubricant that still flows in cold weather for protection. And in the wintertime, the only way that chain case oil will thin out and perform the way it's supposed to be is by the chain building up friction heat drag which is wear and tear you don't want that you want a lubricant that will pour in the cold weather give you more performance more horsepower just like all our other products do and you change it once a year now like Amsoil has a lot of products for a lot of applications and a lot of them we we don't talk about because this is mainly a snowmobile show but we have a complete line of antifreezes do you have a picture of the antifreeze there you can pop i up do up. let me pop that on the screen here we yes. go yes 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 we use a different kind of antifreeze than the other companies do and the reason i really like it because it's pet friendly a lot of antifreeze when it drips out if an animal licks it it's very toxic amzo's not a lot of antifreeze is only good for two years i think amzo's eight i have to double check on the stats but i think it's seven or eight years it's good for and the best thing i like about our antifreeze is it'll make it run cooler because it disperses the heat better but then Amsoil came up with another product we can add to our antifreeze now it's a cooler boost the one on the far right it was designed for stock cars the problem is with stock cars they don't want antifreeze on the track it's too hard to clean up so they got to run straight water straight water will boil faster than antifreeze will so people like to put a cooler boost in their water to make the stock car run cooler well we found out in the winter time by putting that same cooler boost in our car it cuts down on the time it takes for the car to warm up. And in our snowmobiles, when you're out there 40 below and you got to get out of the car, you got to get the snowmobile warmed up. Some people like to jump back in their car to stay warm when the snowmobile's warming up. And will eliminate that problem because the cooler boost will make the snowmobile warm up faster. But when once it does get up to heat, the coolant boost disperses heat faster than antifreeze does, so it will run cooler. And a lot of people say a snowmobile never overheat. I've got, I had to go down a lake seven miles where there's no snow on the middle of the lake and people were overheating them when it was 20 below on the bare ice because we didn't have kickers and the snow wasn't being kicked up in the heat exchange and the machines were overheating except for mine with the coolant boost it made that nice. much difference in the machine run cooler one of the machines with us a yamaha we had to stop and kick the track because the sliders heated up so much the track wouldn't turn anymore so this guy went and looked for open water to keep hitting to cool the engine down wow <laughs> things people will do to keep their motors running yeah, by, for sure. by adding something like a coolant boost, this will help make the engine run cooler, and it also makes the engine heat up faster. Yeah, it's a great additive. I use it in my pickup trucks, my little car, and my snowmobiles. Nice. Anything liquid cool, that's it's a nice additive. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Sure. And when you're out snowmobiling, you're not out snowmobiling when it's 10 above. You're out there when it's 20 below or 10 below, and it does get cold. And by having a product that will warm up faster, Especially a lot of times you stop and you go into a restaurant and you come back out. It doesn't take long for that snow to cool back down. you got to sit there and let it warm up. And a lot of them have a rod and a heat exchanger on it. So once the thermostat opens up once, we got some people that still smoke cigarettes. And the rule is it's a two cigarette before he can take off on a snow belt. It takes that long to warm it up. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, you can cold season when sure. it's really cold out. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Now, we... Um... Before we shift gears, uh, I want to back up a little bit to the Dominator product. A mutual friend of ours a little while back uh, did a testimonial for us. Um, and I know we've already seen it, but it's just a couple of minutes. I'd like to play it again. Uh, this is our mutual friend, Midge Rosebrook. He's the founder of the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. And he made this video. It's a quick video. Let's take a look. This is for our friend, uh, Rob Hilditch, the Amsoil guy. Uh, see what I have here, Rob. And uh, I think you have a photo of my sled uh, last year at Pittsburgh. Mike, you can probably yes. pop that up. I, uh, I've got this uh, 1975 uh, Polaris clone PDC. It started out as a 77 TX 440. And uh, I had Mark Melanger do the job. And Mike has got a photo of it, I believe, somewhere. And you can pop it on. And there's a photo of me sitting on that sled uh, getting ready to head out in the Pittsburgh ride up up north in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire this last March. It was 35, 40 degrees 
we had eight inches of wet, heavy snow. It snowed all day. And I was trying to break in this new engine. It was probably the worst uh, conditions of trying to break in an engine is to take off on a 30 mile run uh, at 50, 60 miles an hour, because that's the speed these guys were going up there uh, to, to break in this new engine. But it ran perfect all day long, and I, and I believe a lot of it is probably due to this racing AMS oil that I use. It's uh, you only use like, uh, I think I did a little more than 50 to 1. It says 50 to 1 here, but I think I did more like 40 to 1 to break in the engine. And so anyway, just a shout out to Rob that, uh, that I'm using it as well. And uh, there you have it. And uh, <laughs> happy trails when we get snow. Yes. And if you're curious about buying some Amazon, I'll just click the link in the description. And uh, in doing so with, with my dealer number, you're helping to support the podcast. And I thank you so much in advance for doing that. And thank all of the people who have been doing that. That helps to support the podcast. Yeah. And thank you. That yeah. helps to support right, the podcast you're doing this. Yeah. Well, I thought this would make Rob smile. Oh, for sure. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So what do you think? Did that make Rob smile? I like seeing good testimonies like that. Good, good deal. So what are your thoughts on that where someone's, you know, done a restoration or something and they're they're breaking in a new engine? Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that as far as do's and don'ts and, and things like that? Best thing to do is use the best oil you can get your hands on for those applications. Yeah. He, I, he doesn't have a thousand dollar motor in that thing. He's probably got, <laughs> he's probably nickel plated cylinders in that. Yes. It's probably a replica of the actual race engine. So yep. it's it's not a cheap motor. So the, the best thing to do is use the best oil you can. Yeah. And you know what? All the big racetracks, if you go on the Eagle River racetrack site, you can look up the rules and regulations, and they tell you you can only use three different kinds of fuel, and there's only two different kinds of oil you can use, Bombardier and Amsoil. So really? Everybody at that track either is running Bombardier or Amsoil. It's the only two that, that that's approved for the track. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. That says something. That's an endorsement in itself, isn't it? Yes, yes, yeah, sure. and it's right on their website. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and I did snowcross for 14 years, and, and when I first year I went to snowcross, people brought five or six snowmobiles with them because they blew the motors up. Second year after me at, being at snowcross, people would go a whole season on the same motor. They wouldn't blow engines up anymore. It made that much of a difference, AMS on the engines. That's amazing. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Now, the nice thing, too, is not only are there the motor oils that we've talked about for either injections or premix or anything like that, um, we're going to pop a, a graphic on the screen. We also have some other items at Amsoil uh, that are useful to snowmobile owners. Uh, yeah, you want to talk yeah some Amsoil's got a lot of different spray cans, fogging oil. A lot of people like to fog their engines before they put them away at the end, the end of the year. The mud slinger, um, a lot of it for the dirt bike people. Um, when they're racing dirt bikes, if they don't have the mud slinger on and it's a muddy track, that dirt bike can come in weighing 50 pounds heavier after 20 laps than what it was before. And the chain lube for the chains for the dirt bikes. Silicone spray. Uh, we had a problem two weeks ago with the wife's car. Uh, uh, couldn't get the passenger door open because the rubbers were froze. You wouldn't think a rubber would freeze on a car, but we end up getting the silicone spray out, spraying it, and haven't had a problem since. A metal detector, it's a big seller for me for opening new accounts. If I go to a trucking company or something like that, they have their favorite oil. Or the best thing I like to do is when I, when I go to a farm tractor, a John Deere guy. John Deere guy will not buy anything else up for John Deere. But if I go approach him with a product like our MP and say, do you ever have a bolt seed you can't get out or something like that or something squeaking or uh, a shaft on your hydraulic that's got rust marks on it and it's wearing the seals out? I said, here, try our metal detector. And by getting them to try that, the farmer will phone me up and said, well, I've never seen a metal detector work as good as that. If it works that good, how good your oil? But if I were to approach the John Deere guy about using AMSO to start with, he won't use any except for John Deere oil. So it's a good introduction product. Now the heavy duty MP, I have a can right here. Oh, good, yeah. It's a 15 ounce can. It's a good size can. And I'm doing a test this week on my car. I got really aggressive snow tires on my car. On one side of the car, I'm spreading the wheel wells with this. The other side, I'm not. Because last week, when we got really cold, there was so much ice and snow under there, the wheel wouldn't turn. I had to go with a hammer and break that frozen snow off. So I'm gonna spray under there with this here. Because I also use them on the snow shovels. Today, we had a really wet snow. 
So after spraying the shovel with this, lift the shovel up and the snow just falls off. It didn't stick. So I'm, a lot of my customers use it in their snow blowers because uh, with the wet snow, they got to get a stick out and stick down the auger to get it cleaned out. By having a spray in there, that wet snow won't stick. It prevents, prevents that problem from happening. Um, two of my snow plow companies use it on the front of the plows. I didn't think snow would stick on a plow. But when it's wet, packy snow, it sticks. Sometimes the front end loader, they go to dump it and it still has a half a load sitting there until they hit it two or three times. By putting the MP in it, they lift it up and it falls right out. So it's, and I got one guy, he wants it. He's going to just try to use it for an undercoater. He's going to spray his hole underneath his vehicle. He's used it for a number of years and he's tired of some of these products people are using right now for undercoating. And he wants to try the Amzol MP. So it'd be interesting how he finds how well it works by the end of the year. But it's a multi purpose product. How yeah. one uses you can use it for? That's amazing. That's amazing. Now we have some comments coming in. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this goes back to when we were talking about the price of uh, snowmobiles. It's hard to find something under ten thousand dollars. So John Lass is confirming that, saying you can't buy a cheap old machine anymore. That's certainly true. No, and everybody then, uh, thinks their old machines are worth big bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get a couple of jags if somebody wants them. <laughs> sure. <Yeah. laughs> And then uh, Ann Packer says, this week we're going to get some snow. So good. Maybe they can finally get some riding in. Yeah. Now, one of the things we haven't talked about yet is, is the pricing. And um, one of the things I always say is, you know, the best is never cheap. Um, but uh, also when you compare other factors, IMSO can in many cases be the, the economical choice, not only the best quality choice, but the most economical choice. And, I'll, and I, I, that leads me to a comment that, we, that just came in, and I'll let you speak to all of this. But Mike Skidmore is saying he just paid $31 per gallon for Lucas snowmobile oil, and that's what he played for, paid for cl uh, Klotz oil in 2014. Um, do you want to speak to that or just the, the economics or the, the value angle of, of uh, AMS oil? We, we have some companies up here selling injector oil for 21 bucks a gallon. It's a recycle company we have up here. If you have a new machine, you definitely don't want to put that quality oil in your vehicle. But Amsoil is cheaper than the manufacturers. If you went to a Bombardier shop and asked them how much their gallon of oil is, um, Bombardier sells theirs for about $69 a gallon. Amsoil, we sell ours for, let's see, the Interceptor, $57 a gallon, one at a time. If you buy a case of it, $227. Now, later on, Mike and I will talk about the preferred account. Preferred, you buy directly from Amzo. Instead of paying $227, you pay $166. That brings it down to like $44 a jug. Yeah. So that's only $10 more than when he paid for that Lucas. But look at the quality difference you're getting in the product. More performance, more horsepower, longer engine life. Yeah, you're getting the best available oil at a very reasonable price. Yeah, yeah. And if you have the older type machine where you don't need the interceptor and you don't have a race engine in it, so you don't need the dominator, you just need the injector oil. Our injector oil is $188 for a case, and your preferred price is $130.39. That brings it down to less than $34 a bottle. Yeah, that's so you're that's still nice. getting a good quality product. But yeah, we, we're comparable to the other products out there that are performance products. Yeah, but we're cheaper than what the manufacturers are. Nice. So it's a very strong value proposal there. Yep. Yeah. So I guess that's a good segue now into the preferred customer program. I'm going to pop a graphic on the screen. And I think in the past you've told me that uh, it's very similar to a Costco membership where it's a one-time $10 fee, but that fee gives you instant access to the deepest possible discounts that Amazon has to offer, as well as some other things. In fact, I'm going to pop that on the screen. Yeah, why buy directly from a retailer that's carrying the product? You can buy directly from Amsel. You can get a preferred count. They have an introduction fee for $10. You get a six-month membership to see if it's cost-efficient for you. And most people find it really is cost-efficient because you can save almost $50 on a case of gallons. And most people, no one snows by snowmobiles by themselves. So they usually tell their buddies, hey, I'm going to order a case. You want one too? So they save $100 on two cases. But by being a preferred customer, you save almost 25% on all the products you order. You don't have to order a full case. You can mix and match. And if you order $100 worth, you get free shipping. So say you wanted a, case, a couple of bottles of Dominator oil and some Interceptor. You can mix and match the case. You get a total of $100. They ship it to you free. On your birthday, they send you a $5. You get a $5 coupon. Every time you order $100 worth, you get a $5 coupon. So if you ordered um, $600 worth 
during the year, that would pay for your $30 membership the following year. So your membership would be free for you by ordering that much product. Yeah, that's an amazing It doesn't value. take all that long to order that much product. No. Uh, what was it? Uh, the, the, the Interceptor, uh, $166 for a case. Sure, yeah. sure. And, and if at this point you're thinking about taking advantage of that, the, way, the best way to do it is look in the description for a link uh, to the Preferred Customer Program. Click on that link, and it's just a few clicks to get yourself set up on that Preferred Customer Program. And then you can go shop on the website, and since you've clicked the boxes for the Preferred Customer Program, anything you order now is going to give you uh, that deepest level of discount that's available to you now as a Preferred Customer. So now you, you select your items, and you make your order, and you're probably going to save more than your $10 investment right on that first order. Yes. So you get your savings right away. It's an incredible value. Yeah. Um, so and, and, and also the other thing, too, is in clicking that link, you're signing up under Rob and I. And in the interest of full disclosure, I'm signed up as an Amsoil dealer under Rob. So when you order through me using that link in the description and using my dealer number there, uh, Rob and I both benefit. And if you enjoy these podcasts that you see us on every week, it's a wonderful way to support that because Rob and I both make a commission uh, whenever you order. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It's just a commission we, we get as being set up as dealers. And the commissions that I make go directly toward offsetting the cost of doing these podcasts. So it's a wonderful way to support the podcast. And, you know, it's a way I'd like to thank people for doing that uh, because it does. It's not cheap to do these podcasts. I'm happy to do them, but it costs money. And the, off the MZOIL commissions help to offset that. And uh, one other thing, we've got a promotion that's on currently. I'll pop the graphic on the screen if you want to talk this up, Rob. If anybody's ordering other products, like say you got a diesel truck or a car or something, you're ordering some other products, and you add two bottles of Amsoil 2 Cycle to that oil order, they're going to throw in a free hat for you. Nice. And you just got to use the promotion code CCO123ATS, and it's good till January 31st. Yeah, so there's a couple more days to act on that. Yeah. And there's a certain part of the order, the order process, where it will ask you for the the dealer number of the person who you refer, who has referred you. And you'll see my number there on the screen, 304-55594. I'll ask you to please enter that number. That way, Rob and I will both get credit for it. And and we do thank you so much in advance for doing that. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people send me an email and say, well, what is the price of something? If you click on the, the bottom of Mike's thing, there's a thing on there where you can click and you can get a free catalog from Amazon. Yes. And inside the catalog where you open it up is the two cycle oils. And it tells you what the retail price is and what the preferred price is. And it tells you one bottle or one case. So you know ahead of time exactly what you're paying for all the AMZO products. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of AMZO products, look at this wide range of products that AMZO has to offer. Um, all of these products are in that catalog and it gives you a chance to sit there at your leisure and flip through the catalog and see what, if anything, in there is right for you. Yes, yes. Amsoil has a complete line of products for everything, right from gas engines to um, diesel engines, uh, forklifts, compressor oils, automatic transmission fluid. One product that's not on that picture, Mike, one of my favorites, is the Amsoil 75W90 gear lead. Has there we go. Have you ever tried to change the oil in the rear end of the car at home? I know the shops all have pumps and all that, but if you're doing this at home and you have a regular ball like this and you're trying to fill up a rear end, you don't have any room to tilt that any higher than that. This bottle, you put it up, you squeeze it, and 100% of the fluid comes out of this bottle. What nice. a neat idea for filling rear ends, transfer cases, automatic transmissions, stuff like that. And all That's our uh, products like that come in that. I wish our two cycle would come in it too, but it's, got, it's more money for that style bottle than it is for the regular. Sure. That's a really innovative approach to that for those awkward yes. angles like that. Yes. Yes. At the next car show we got, we got a rear end sitting there and we got 10 of those bottles with water in it and people are going to try and realize how easy it is to fill something like that instead of using the old fashioned bottle, try to tip it and fill it in. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine there's a whole lot of profanity involved trying to do that. Oh, you waste <laughs> You're so You're making much. a mess. And, yeah. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. And some, sure. of, some of the some of the big four wheel drives are thirty five hundreds. They they will take four bottles of that stuff. So you have to buy five to get four in because you waste it so much. With the Amso, hundred percent of the stuff all the bottle goes in. Goes it all goes in. Yeah, you yeah. get the right angle. You stuff stuff that little nozzle right in there and just squeeze the bag until it's empty. Yeah. 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 If if you spill anything, it's one or two drops. Yeah. As opposed to ounces of it. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. That 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 creates an extra value as well. Yeah, yeah. And since yeah. we're talking about the automotive product, Amsoil's 
5W30, 20W30, all the engine oils that AMSO has is warranted for 25,000 miles in one year. Most people change their oil at three or 5,000 miles. And the reason they do that is because the petroleum oils, they oxidize. They form carbons, gums, sludges, varnish. They don't wear out. They get contaminated. That's why you got to change the oil at regular intervals. Synthetic oil, it was designed by a guy that was a jet aircraft pilot. And one day when he went to work, he asked his boss at work, why does my jet start when it's 40 below zero and my car won't? He says, it's the synthetic oil. So once he found that out, he started investigating and designing the oil for the automobile industry. And when he first got, he was, we were the first oil to be AI approved back in 1972. Mobile One, them couldn't pass the test. None of the other products could pass the test. And all the other oil companies still were changing the oils at 3,000 miles. And Amsoil, when they first came out in the market, they said 25,000 miles in one year. Castro and everybody else phoned our president up and said, you guys are going to be sued. Why are you doing that? And he said, well, we tested our oil and we can go further than that. Wow. So Amsoil, since 1972, has been promoting 25,000 miles or one year oil changes. And people are amazed when they pull my stick out of my truck. And the oil is so clean inside because it doesn't form any carbons, gums, or sludges. And by putting a synthetic oil in the car, it's the same benefit as the snowball oil. Cuts down friction and drag. Less friction, less drag. The oil runs cooler. For every 10 degrees you drop your oil temperature, doubles the life. Wow. And for every friction and drag you cut down in the engine, gives you better gas mileage. So you're going to get longer oil changes, better gas mileage, less friction, less drag, engines that last longer and you're going to get more performance out of the car and the average truck you don't buy a new truck now for under seventy thousand dollars yeah big so money a lot of people at a hundred thousand two hundred thousand are looking and trading their trucks mine's in kilometers so mine's a hundred and a million and three hundred thousand kilometers with eight hundred thousand miles i think that is and it still runs like a charm now wow. the carpet's wore out the seat's got a spring sticking out of it but the more it's a six liter and they're wow. not popular for lasting very long and it still runs like a charm that's amazing. That's from running Amsoil all these years. Yes. Yes. I bought the truck on a Wednesday. I had to run to Montreal back. The next morning, I went in the dealership and said, dump the oil. I said, you just got a truck yesterday. I said, yeah, I got 1,000 miles on it. So we took an oil sample. And when the oil sample came back, the oil was contaminated with silicone, they say. And silicone is sand. Well, the engines are sandblasted. That's why I tell everybody with a new vehicle, change your first oil change soon. Because there's a lot of contaminated, a lot of big metal particles in your first break-in of the oil. Yeah. So I recommend that people change your oil early on your first oil change. Flush that out. Go quick. twice as long, and then third, when you put the Amsoil in, don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, cool. So we're unless you had any more on that, and if you do, by all means, keep going. But unless you had any more on that, I was going to switch gears. Did Did you have any more before we change gears? Or? While we're talking about the engine oils and the new gear loop bottle we just showed you, I do a lot with highway trucks. Um, some of these trucks take 48 quarts of oil. And when you're trying to t sell them a $15 quart of oil, you got to prove to them they're going to save money. Now, a lot of these guys are going 10,000 kilometers right now between oil changes. And with the Amsoil, we do an oil analysis for them. And when the oil analysis comes back, it says, continue, don't change the oil yet. And some of them are going five times longer between oil changes. Some of these guys are changing oil once a month. By switching over the Amsoil, they're doing it every half year. And I have a lot of customers that do steady runs, that do the same kind of run, and they know exactly how much gas. They're burning $1,000 worth of gas, diesel fuel a week. If they got a 10% increase in fuel economy, that's 100 bucks a week they're saving in their pocket by switching. Yeah, so, that's significant savings, yeah. Yeah, yeah. One of my customers was delivering home fuel. Now, they got their oils free for their truck, and they came and bought Amsoil off me because one, one Christmas day at 10 below, the trucks wouldn't start and somebody needed home fuel. He said, yeah. by having the Amsoil in it, it starts right up. And they got an average. They're the ones that got the average of 10% increase in fuel economy. So it was cheaper for them to run Amsoil and buy it off me than to put their their comp brand of company oil in. Plus, they were spending every one Saturday a month changing the four trucks. Once they switched over the Amsoil, they didn't have to do that. Yeah. So it saved them money and they made more money by running the Amsoil. It was cheaper for them. Sure. Yeah. Now, would you say it's it's a good idea to do periodic uh, oil analysis of, on your vehicles just to kind of see what's going on with your engine? What 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 will that tell you if, if you're doing that, and and how useful is that as far as far as selecting oils or deciding when to change your oil or 
One of my other videos had a customer that was running from Canada down to Mexico, get parts, bring back and forth. And they switched over to Amzo at 50,000 miles on their highway truck. Now at 70,000, they did an oil sample and they said oil sample is a little more resample at 90. So they resampled at 90 and they told them to take their engine in and get their can replaced. So this guy took his truck into the dealership, it was still under warranty, said, I want the can replaced. Oil now says it's starting to wear out and it's low number such and such. So I phoned the oil company and I said, how do you know it's low such and such? He said, we know what model engine is. We've had that engine happen about 200 times already. So we know exactly what it is and why it's causing the problem. Eh? And the dealership says, no, we checked it, nothing wrong with it. The guy says, well, I'm a paying customer. I'll pay the $600 to have the cam changed. They took the cam out, and the exact lobe that the oil analyst said was where it was where it. Now, if that would have <laughs> broke on him in Mexico, instead of being 600 it would have been $6,000 to get the truck repaired. He says most of the time he tows the trucks back home to get them fixed because it's so expensive down there to fix them. But yeah. by doing no analysis, that prevented uh, a problem from happening. Yeah. So it's a wonderful preventative measure to, to do regular oil analysis. Especially if you've got a vehicle taking 48 quarts of oil instead of dumping it. And to prove yeah. to a customer that the AMSO will last longer, that's what we do with some of the vehicles. Yeah. yeah. But the average person with the car, they don't find it's necessary to do. Sure. You know, most people can pull the dipstick out, put wipe the dipstick with a Kleenex, look up at the sun. And if there's metal particles in there, it, you'll see, you see the, the flicker off the metal. You don't see any of that with the AMSO. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And if the person knows anything about oil, they know when they were changing their other oil, how black and thick it was. Mm. And uh, I took my car into the truck one time. The guy says, why are you changing the oil? It's brand new. I said, no, I have uh, 30,000 miles on that oil. Wow. That's why I'm changing it. Wow. He says, oh, no way. It doesn't have that much miles on it. Yeah. That's impressive. I have all my friends come. Can I get your used oil? My car uses oil. Can I have your used oil? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the gift that keeps on giving, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And when we're talking about the gear lube, how the gear lube, uh, um, most people don't realize the uh, ADW90, how thick it would get. Mm -hmm. And I get a lot of highway trucks to get a better fuel economy by changing the gear lube. Amso's gear lube has a 500,000 mile extended warranty on the oil. Most most highway trucks are changing every 50,000 miles. Mm -hmm. Amso's 500,000 miles with their gear lube. That's amazing. Yeah, so it's a big savings for a highway truck. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Over time, that you really save a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's impressive. Well, cool. So in a moment, we're going to talk about the business opportunity at Amsoil, but I'm going to transition into that with, with a quick announcement. Um, and that is this. A little while back, I got this award from Amsoil. I'm going to try to get it. Where I, here we go. Now, this is a bronze cup for a sales achievement. Um, and it's nice that they recognize me for that and everything. I really appreciate that. But the real thanks goes to the viewers who have been purchasing Amsoil using my dealer number. I really, really appreciate that. And uh, as I've said before, when you purchase Amsoil using my dealer number, it helps to offset the cost of doing these podcasts. And Rob and I are doing Amsoil together. I'm signed up under Rob. So when you order through me, Rob and I both benefit. If you enjoy seeing our smiling faces every week uh, and, and feel that, that that's something that's enjoyable to you and you want to help support that, buying Amsoil with us is a wonderful way to do that. And there are links uh, to do that in the description uh, to, to get started with the Amsoil Preferred Customer Program, also to order a free catalog. Um, those are great ways to get started. Um, and did you have anything more, Rob, before we transition into Amsoil as a business opportunity? I forgot to mention one thing about the two-cycle oil. Hmm? The interceptor. I don't know if you can see the sign behind me, but I'm going to grab it. Oh. You see that in the screen, Mike? Yes. Okay, it's called Run on Freedom. Amsoil came out with this program to recognize a manufacturer can't tell you. Bombardier can't sell you, tell you you got to run Bombardier oil. You don't have a warranty. If they do that, they have to give you oil free. It's a modest act down the States, it's called something. So Angelo came up with this plan to let people know that a manufacturer can't say you got to run the oil. So Angelo, if you buy a brand new snowmobile, they'll give you a one year warranty. If you buy a brand new snowmobile and you put Angelo in the machine and you fill out this card, you can get a two year warranty from Angelo. So if anything happens to your snowmobile the second year, Angelo is going to cover it because they believe their oil is so much better than all the other ones on the market. And that's a great marketing plan for us. Yeah, the other for sure. manufacturers aren't happy with it. They're trying to say, you can't warranty our machines. <laughs> well, we know our oil are better than your oil you're selling, and we're going to prove it to you. By, and they, even if the person's machine's one year old and they start switching AMSO, we'll still give them one more year warranty. 
That's amazing. Yep. That's that's what they call putting your money where your mouth is. The yes. proof in the pudding, so to speak. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. So, yeah, unless there's anything else, did you want to, uh, shall we transition to the business opportunity? Or? Okay. Okay, let's transfer over. Sure. So, yeah, as, as we we're saying, you know, I'm signed up under Rob as a dealer. Uh, and if you sign up under me, Rob and I are both available to you for coaching and support. Um, and we, each of us brings a significant amount to the table of value to you as someone signing up for Amsoil. And I'll give you an example. Rob's been doing Amsoil for over 40 years. He knows all of the products in, ins and outs. He knows all of the different uh, business models that you can do with Amsoil. And the one thing that he's especially strong at is selling Amsoil at events. Uh, you think of car shows, cruise nights, uh, snowmobile shows, boat shows, any sort of event or race or something. Rob is really good at selling Amsoil at those events. Um, and so, Rob, is if you're curious about that, if you enjoy going to those types of events and races and things and thinking about uh, trying to monetize that selling Amsoil, Rob is the guy to coach you with that. And when you signed up under me, you get Rob and I. What I bring to the table is I do a lot with social media. And uh, I can help coach you on how to generate Amsoil leads on social media. I also have places that you can post to right now. Uh, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel, creating your own pages, social media pages and things. I'm not saying it's a bad idea to do that. It's a very good idea to do that. But I've got places you can start posting right away. And if you, let's say you create a new page, it's a way, it's a place to promote that page. And I've got a lot of little details, ins and outs on how to get on the right side of the, the Facebook algorithm. Uh, if you're thinking about doing a YouTube channel or a podcast, I can help you with that because I've been doing this. Um, a lot of things Rob and I both bring to the table that is uniquely available to you. Uh, that it's not available from other Amsoil dealers. And that's not to knock other Amsoil dealers, but Rob and I bring something very unique to the table if you're thinking about joining Amsoil as a dealer. Um, anything to add to that, Rob? I have dealers from California, Florida, BC, all over that I help. So with email, it's really easy to help dealers. We're available 24 hours a day. Yeah, you don't have to live right in my own town for me to help you. Yeah. It's true. With, with a phone and email and so forth, it's very easy to be in contact and give coaching and support. And yeah. And in a moment, I'm going to show a clip of Rob at a, at a, at a vintage snowmobile event. Or I don't know if it's modern or vintage, but a snowmobile event. And you'll see the setup he's got. It's a very impressive setup. Um, now, the nice thing is, is this is what's possible, but you don't have to start at that level. You can start as simple as walking around like you see Rob here with an Amsoil hat and a shirt. Uh, and do you want to talk us through that about, you know, people will approach you? Uh, when they see you wearing that? Yes. And ask the, you clothing, the clothing pays off so much. Uh, I could be in a grocery store and a person comes up and says, do you know somebody that sells Amsoil? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm wearing the clothing. And I have the logos on my vehicle. And I come out of a parking lot and there's somebody standing beside my car. And I'm thinking, did they hit my car or something? What are they doing? <laughs> person said, I've been waiting 10 minutes for you to come out. I don't know where to buy Amsoil. That's the biggest problem with Amsoil. People don't know where to buy it. So by sure. seeing my clothing or my logo or something somewhere, that's they're waiting to find out where they can buy it from. And yeah. that's when I set them up as a preferred account. And that's a modest investment too for a dealer, you know, to, to get a hat and a shirt, maybe a couple of magnets for your vehicle. That, that you probably do all of that for under $100. And, and now you've got a people approaching you. And if you sign up under Rob and I, Rob is going to coach you on how, what to say to these people when they approach you, how to, how to use that, to take that conversation to the place of turning into a solid lead or possibly even a sale. And becoming a regular customer for you uh and it's a it's a, just a wonderful thing is just a, a great way to start this amsoil business is, is is to get a hat and a shirt and a magnet for your car uh, and just let let it come to you and as you get going then you can you know do do like what rob is doing at these shows in fact let me pop that video on the screen we're going to see rob uh, and this he's talking with a, a mutual friend of ours this is gary porter he does the uh, <laughs> snowmobile sessions uh uh a podcast which is a wonderful podcast there's a link to it in the description if you like snowmobiles at all please visit our mutual friend gary porter he does a wonderful podcast he let's a take a look energy. at he sure does yeah yeah he's he's a great guy uh but yeah let's take a look at, at rob and gary hanging out at a, at a at a show let's take a look snowmobile sessions live enjoy the ride it's a journey for life and I'm your ride. Hang on. We got Rob the Oil Guy. He's, we, we say hi to Rob the Oil Guy. Rob the Oil Guy, how are you? Are we, Good. Are we live today? No, you're not live. It's pre-recorded. Oh, I Memrex. Get, I can't get, yeah, it's Memrex. <laughs> I can't get live to work. How's the show been, bud? You know what? This afternoon, we were swamped. It was stupid how many people was here. Yeah. Some people have been out in their bicycles or skateboards or something today. <laughs> it was packed. But it's supper time, so it's calmed down, and we get a chance to have something to eat ourselves. That's great. That's great. What do you, uh, what's been the hot seller for you at, at uh, this year's event? 
Oh, the Interceptor is always one of the biggest sellers. It's a trail riding machine. Uh, gives you more horsepower, more performance, longer range of life. So that's what everybody wants. And it's cheaper than buying factory oil. And that's, it outperforms them. That's great. But some of the young kids, they still think they need the racing oil. It's mainly, <laughs> for, racing, mainly for racing applications. The Interceptor is 98% no ash. So with the exhaust valves and all that, you have no problem. But the Dominator is only 91. So it will dirty up your valves if you hit a bumpy trail. Right. Wow. So if you want to change your plugs, you can run it. Yeah. Dominator, but but it's a race oil, right? mainly for racing. Yeah, that's cool. And you hooked me up with some 100 to one premix, which is awesome. Yeah. The Saber, I just like the name Saber. One of these little bottles for five gallons of gas yeah. will give you more protection than what the other brand. Still, I won't mention it. Yeah, at 32 to one, this gives you more protection. Exactly. I'm going to be running that in the uh, Mercury Force this su next summer, and uh, I maybe I will be running my leaf blower in the fall for sure because I want to test that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. You got to start good. Option, don't yeah, you? yeah, I do too. That's right. There so, you go. okay, we will be in touch with that. Thank you for your time, Rob, I the oil guy. Need an extra one. I need an extra one. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink it. Well, maybe I'll start. Hey, hey, you got here, bones? What's that? Here, I'm going to come back and grab it, okay? I'm just going to take a walk. I'll be back to grab that. Thanks, guys. Yeah, the good times at the uh, at the snowmobile show. Yes, yes. Yeah. But, uh, but that's the thing is, you know, Rob has been doing this, as you can imagine, for quite a few years, and it's taken a while to build up where you can have that big uh, kiosk and display there. Um, so I guess the point I'm trying to make is if, as a new Amsoil dealer, you don't have to start out at that level. You can start off, like we said, you know, wearing a, a hat and a shirt uh, and, and getting some conversations going. But over time, if you find that it's working for you, you can maybe start with a small display. And as that grows, uh, get a slightly larger display. And over time, you can get to the point where you've got a display like Rob has got there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Rob would I only have a 10 by 10 booth. Wow. 90%. But that there show, we had 12 dealers working at it. Really? Wow. Nice. Nice. And, and you wouldn't do all of that if it wasn't profitable, you know, to set up a, a display like that and do all of that. So it's it's very much worth your while to do that. Yeah. And, um, and, and a lot of yeah. times when we go to some shows, I just open a tailgate and I just have products sitting on the back of the tailgate with the flag up. And I go around and see the show myself. And then I sit there in a lawn chair. So. And a lot of times, some of the shows only charge me five bucks to come, like on a cruise night or yeah. a vintage snowmobile show. Yeah, they'll say, they'll say, give us some prizes. You can set up a free booth. Yeah, that's cool. So even just you know, with, with some items on a tailgate and a flag, an Amsoil flag, people will approach you and ask you about Amsoil, and it's an opportunity for you to have that conversation to uh, to to try to sell some Amsoil or sign them up as a. I make a sure I park right beside my buddies that are already all using Amsoil already. <laughs> nice, <laughs> and they all have the Amsoil decals on their vintage machines. Sure. So when their friends come over, they send the guy over and say, "This is where we get our Amsoil from." <laughs> nice. Yeah. So that's you know, and, and if anyone who's thinking about that, and if you if you enjoy uh, car shows, boat shows, anything like that, snowmobile shows, like Rob and I do, it's a wonderful way to monetize that. And just imagine pulling up, putting down the the tailgate of your pickup, and having a few Amsoil items on there, maybe an Amsoil banner flying. Um, yeah. It's a very modest investment, and Rob can coach you on how to do that and how to handle those conversations as people approach you, how to turn those conversations into something that's productive for everyone. Um, so that, that's what Rob is, is available to you for. And as I said, I do a lot with social media, and I've got numerous Facebook groups that have thousands and thousands of, of followers. And you can post in there. I can show you how to post, what to post, the frequency, all of the, there, there are guidelines to do this. I'm not saying just do whatever you want in there, but I can show you the exact guidelines of the, how to do it, how not to do it. So you're not on the wrong side of the Facebook algorithm. And so that you're on the, the right side of the, the viewers of the, of the, the group uh, to get maximum effect and, and to get, to generate yourself some catalog requests or uh, inquiries about Amsoil. I'll show you exactly how to do it. Um, and you don't, it, I encourage you to create your own Facebook page. But then I can show you how to leverage that into what I was just talking about. But you can start this without a Facebook page or any presence on Facebook other than your own personal profile. And I'll coach you through how to at least get started putting your stuff in front of my audience and then show you how to build an audience of your own and how to work that as well. And if you want to get into doing video like we're doing now, I can help you with that. I do a lot with social media. Uh, and I have muscle car groups, exotic car groups, uh, and I've also got one called Wheels, Keels, and Snowmobiles, where anything with a, with a motor, anything with a gas motor is fair game. Yeah. And that's got like 15,000 fans. So you can be posting in there right away. And, I'll, and like I say, you can't just do whatever you want in there. I'll, I'll give you the guidelines, but the guidelines are to help you to, so that you're not um, getting on the wrong side of the audience or the wrong side of the algorithm. And I'll coach you on all of that. Uh, so when you sign up for Rob and I, you're getting both of us and 
things that we, he and I, uh, things that he and I both have unique to offer that, that may not be available to you from other Amsoil dealers who would like to sign you up as a dealer. And again, not to knock them, but Rob and I bring, bring each bring something very unique to the table that could be very useful to you as an Amsoil dealer, as a new Amsoil dealer to help you get started and get some momentum, get off on the right foot. And I'm, I'm the very first one to tell anybody, Amsoil's not a get rich scheme. But sure. if you're interested in making an extra hundred, five hundred, a thousand, or ten thousand dollars a mark, month on a part time base, it's available with Amazon. Yeah. It's actually available to do. Yeah, and you can start with a very modest investment and you can grow into it. Yes. You know, yes. let's say you, you do it and you've been doing it for a few years, you could get to where you're doing a, easily a few extra thousand dollars a month. Yep. And you could get to the point where, hey, maybe I'll do this full time. Yes. And, yeah. and if you're like us and you enjoy, enjoy boat shows, car shows, snowmobile shows, how would that be a full time income where you're, you're just going to shows all the time? <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's a dream. Like to do. Yeah. Yeah. For people like Rob and I, that's a dream. Yeah. 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 A dream. And has a number of divisions you can go towards. I've got one person. All he does is sign up preferred customers. Mm -hmm. he, he offers people the very best possible price to buy the Amzo. He doesn't have any AMs on his house. He doesn't sell to anybody else. He just gives out catalogs, and then the catalogs are two prices. He tells them sign up, order it themselves. So every month he gets a computer printout saying, "Here's all the people to order. Here's your commission check." And then I have other groups of people that only do retail and commercial. I got one guy. All he does is small engines. Well, he's into landscape companies, so he goes around the landscape companies and small engines and signs them up. And like a snowmobile shop, if you sign up a snowmobile shop, the AMSO will give them a 30-day payment plan. They buy $450 worth. They get free shipping. And the reason they like carrying the AMSO product, because AMSO will put them on their locator. So if you have a small engine shop and they, they buy $450 worth, they you send a picture of them into AMSO. And anybody within 100 kilometers goes on the AMSO site and looks for oil, a picture of their shop comes up. Nice. No other oil company does that for their customers. So they like having service that Amsoil offers to them. Yeah, that's a so, huge benefit right there. Yeah, yeah. And if uh, I got one guy, he's got a retail account that orders fifty thousand dollars worth four times a year. Wow. He gets he gets ten percent for a profit check and ten percent towards his commission credits. Yeah, that adds that's, up. That's a part time job for him. That's amazing. Now commercial accounts, you only get five percent, hmm. but a commercial account just doesn't buy a, a case of oil. They, they buy do trims. volumes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, most of the skid steers and backhoes, and we got a lot of guys with uh, logging equipment. <laughs> they take three or four drums to fill that piece of equipment. Yeah. 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 And I'm glad you brought that up, too, because there are quite a few different business models for someone who wants to do the AMSO business. We just talked about uh, a few here. You know, Rob does a lot with the shows, so if you like shows, that's one business model. Uh, if you like to do things online like I do, that's another business model. And then he talked about the commercial accounts, the retail accounts. There, there are a number of different business models. So, yeah. if, you know, if there's something that you – specialize in or if you have certain types of contacts that that, that that are available to you you know contact us and we'll help tailor a business model uh to turn that into an opportunity for you yep yeah well cool can you I, believe I, I we've like been working in categories yeah for sure you're active in all of the categories yes that's yes. cool and a person says the guy you're talking to is a wealthy millionaire how did you get him to sign up under amsoil i said do you keep your options open on how you make money yeah. The guy says, yeah. I said, well, here, here's my email. Send me an email. So before I get home from the show that day, I got an email from that guy saying, what are you talking about how to make money? I'm interested. <laughs> the guy's a millionaire. But that's why he's a millionaire because he knows how to make money. Yeah, and he's probably got his hand into more than one thing. Yep. Yeah, different activities for, to, to, to generate income for him. Yep, so he's already got some companies that could use the lubricants. Sure, yeah, he probably has some good contacts, yeah. Yep. That's cool. Very cool. Well, yeah, if you can believe, we've been talking about Amsoil here for almost an hour. Um, we're about to wind it down, but any, any final thoughts, Rob, before we do that? You know what? It's a fun business. I worked for General Motors for 30 years and five days, and they came up to me and said, do you want an early retirement? <laughs> and that was on a Monday. Do you want to retire on Friday? I said, I sure do. They said, don't you want to go home and talk it over with your wife? I said, no, she's not retiring. I am. <laughs> but I had a mother at that time that was sick and needed my help. Yep. So I took the opportunity, but if it wasn't for the AMSO business, I wouldn't have been able to have the opportunity to take that option. Yes. And I was 48 years old when I retired from General Motors. Because of the extra money, AMSO gave me the opportunity to do that. Yeah. And that then gave you more time to work on AMSO and to, to build that up as well, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. now my daughter wants to know when she can have the company. <laughs> oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's working on it now, so. 
Good. So she's already involved. Wonderful. Yeah. Now we've got a comment that's come in. My good friend John Spranger Jr. says he's been using semi-synthetic oil. Do you have to drain it all out before using the AMS oil? No. No. If you're running petroleum oil and you have 20,000 kilometers on your vehicle, we do recommend to put a flush in. Take mm -hmm. the filter off, put a cheap filter on, add a kind of flush, let it run for 20 minutes. That way the oil starts off in a clean engine. If you're running a semi-synthetic, the engine should be partly clean. You shouldn't have to run a flush. Yeah, the people that have 80,000 kilometers in the car and they put 100% synthetic in and they phone me and say, my car is using oil now. I tell them, well, take your filter off, put another filter on because the synthetic oil will naturally clean the inside of the engine and a dirty oil will burn. Hmm. But uh, if you're on a semi-synthetic before, you should be pretty clean. Good, good. Another question I, I meant to ask you, and I'm glad that, that reminded me of it. Uh, so I've got a 1992 ski -Doo Safari. It's got the 377 with the inject oil injection. Yes. It's got injection oil in it. Should I drain that before I put AMS oil injector oil, or can I put that in with the existing injector oil? And If it was the middle of the summer, I would say, yeah, take it out and put AMS oil in because you'll notice the benefit of AMS oil right off the bat. But sure. this time of year, no one wants to do that. AMS oil will mix with any other oil you have. So just top it off and, and keep going. Yep. Wonderful. Yep. Yeah, and we, a lot one of more people have snowball and they're running AMSO and they're in the middle of nowhere and their light comes on, they got to add oil. You can add any brain you want to AMSO. It's going to smell a little, but it's not sure. going to do any harm. Won't do any damage. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then uh, you can't do that on. Sure. Sure. Now, John Spranger Jr., who made the comment earlier, he was, he, he's specifying he was talking about a snowmobile as opposed to a car. As far as, and this was the original question, uh, using semi-synthetic oil, does he have to drain it all out before using AMSO? And he's talking about a snowmobile. No. No. Okay. Good. No. Good. No. And John, we thank you for those questions, by the way. We really appreciate that. Yeah. yeah John's a good friend of mine and we, he's been with the podcast from the very beginning. Uh, and we've been corresponding from the very beginning as friends and uh, finally had a chance to meet him. He's out in Wisconsin, but he was uh, over the holidays. He was visiting family here in Vermont and uh, he wasn't too far away. So we got together and had lunch one day, had a really nice visit. I yeah, had a chance to meet him and the missus and we had a really good time. Where about in Wisconsin is he from? Eland. Eland. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm heading to cool. Duluth this year. Duluth. Oh, nice. Superior, Wisconsin. Sure. Is that an event or something? Or Am Am's little 50th anniversary party. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Well, good. That sounds like a great time. Yeah. So cool. So unless there are any final thoughts here, we're going to give the last word as always to Amzo. We've got a little Amzo video that Rob and I made a few months ago. Any Anything else before we transition to that? Or? No, that's a good video. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that was fun to make. Yeah, yeah that was fun. Well, cool. Well, thank you everyone for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate your coming on and being a viewer. And we thank Rob for being here tonight. And uh, thank everyone who's either considering purchasing Amsoil uh, under Rob and I or becoming a dealer. Uh, and also we thank the people who have been doing that along as well. We thank you so very much for that. And uh, yeah, have a have wonderful a day, evening. Mike. All right, you too. Take care. Hello, everyone. This is Rob and Mike. How are you doing today, Rob? I'm doing good. Mike, yourself? Very well. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Now, uh, today, we're going to be talking about AMSOIL, and uh, in a few moments, we're going to show you how you can get the deepest discounts, free shipping, and free gifts when you order your AMSOIL products through us. But first, I'm going to ask Rob to give you a quick description of what AMSOIL is and why you should consider using AMSOIL products in your motorized vehicles. Thanks, Mike. AMSOIL is 100% synthetic oil. Everybody uses AMSOIL for a different reason. Some people like the benefits that AMSOIL is warrantied for 25,000 miles in one year. The reason we can do that is because AMSOIL doesn't oxidize. It doesn't form the usual carbons, gums, sludges like petroleum oils do. That's why we can keep it in the engines longer. Petroleum oils never do wear out. They oxidize themselves. That's why they have to be changed at 3,000 kilometers. And AMSOIL likes the benefit that you only have to change the oil once a year. That saves some money. Some of the people like the benefit of AMSOIL is it's a slipperier type lube. By having a slipperier type lube, it cuts down friction and drag. By less friction and drag, engines run 20 to 50 degrees cooler, better gas mileage. Now, Amsoil says 25% more protection than the industry requires is in the Amsoil bottles. My average customer gets about 10% increase in gas mileage. That's a big savings. Yeah. And by cutting down friction and drag, for every 10 degrees you cut down the friction and drag, doubles the life of the engine. So by having the engine run cooler, it makes it last longer. Some people like the benefit of the range of the Amsoil. Amsoil's flash point is 425 degrees, and it pours at 50 below zero. 
Wow. If you ever try petroleum oil when it's 10 below, it turns to honey. And yep. in the summertime, petroleum oil thins out. And once it, once it thins out, that's when it starts breaking down. So Amsoil is an all-season oil. can give you better gas mileage, longer engine life, less maintenance. It ends up being cheaper over a year's time running Amsoil than it is petroleum oils. That's amazing. That's amazing. And Amsoil is, is available for pretty much any motorized vehicle, uh, anything, from, anything from lawn equipment, cars, trucks, boats, ATVs, motorcycles, snowmobiles. Yep, yep. And a lot of people phone me up and say, well, what's the benefit of our gear loop? Exactly what I told you about the engine oil. It pours in cold weather. It runs cooler, makes the equipment last longer. And they say, well, it's the benefit of the small engine. Same thing. Makes the engine run cooler, last longer, better performance. So it saves on all the applications that Amsoil has available. Wonderful, wonderful. So, yeah, let's uh, let's talk now. Uh, hopefully this has convinced people uh, to think about maybe joining us in the Amsoil experience. Let's talk about some of the discounts and free shipping and how that all happens. I'm going to pop a, a graphic on the screen. And, uh, yeah, by all means, if you want to talk, talk people through how this preferred customer program works. Amsoil has a number of different programs. One of our main ones is a catalog customer where somebody can order directly out of our catalog. If they order out of the catalog, they order $100 worth, Amsoil ship it right to their house. But our best program is our preferred customer. For only $10 for six months, you become a preferred customer, you save 25% on all the product. You order $100 worth, they're going to give you free shipping. Um, you don't have to order a whole case. You can mix and match. Say you want four bottles of small engine, seven bottles of 5W30, and a couple of gear loops. You can mix and match. You can order one bottle at a time if you want. There's no minimums, no maximums. By being a preferred customer, you save over 25% on all the products you're going to buy. Amazon sends you extra gifts, uh, a $5 gift certificate on your birthday, $5 when you renew, renew your account, and stuff like that. So it's a good way to save on some of the products you want to buy. For sure, for sure. Yeah, it's an incredible value. And this is the, the deepest level of discount that anyone can get when ordering Amazon. Is that correct? It is. It is. Wonderful. Wonderful. So let's take people through the step-by-step the -step experience of, of placing an Amsoil order. Then that would include signing up for the preferred customer discount, or sorry, preferred customer program so they can receive those deepest levels of discount. So let's go to the website. This is what the website is going to look at, look like. These are some screenshots. If you, once you go to Amsoil.com, there's a link in the description, or you can just type that into a browser, Amsoil.com. This is the page you land on at the upper corner of the page there you see how i've circled in red that is the link to click the join now link that will take you to the preferred customer program page where you can take advantage of all these discounts and free shipping and everything that we've just been talking about this is what that page looks like in the lower right you're going to click join now this will pop up you select the duration you'd like whether it's six months or 12 months and click add to cart now once this this uh, pop-up goes away you'll be back on the main page and the upper left you'll see where i've got that red arrow it says shop now you can start shopping for products, and on your very first order, you're going to get these discounts and the free shipping as long as it's over $100. You'll get all of these benefits right away. So once you click shop, it's going to take you to uh, some product, the product page. There are different types of oils, lubricants, so on and so forth. For the benefit of this exercise we're doing now, I'm just going to click motor oil. It shows different types of motor oil. Let's click gasoline. Now this takes us to an item. It's uh, their synthetic motor oil. And you can see the item there, and there's choices for different viscosities. But take a look at the price. Let's take a closer look. Let's zoom in. Uh, but if you've join the preferred customer program first, you're going to automatically get the deepest levels of discount. That's what we're looking at here. You're saving $3.80 on that quart of oil. Instead of paying $16.29, you're now paying, paying $12.49 for that quart of oil. That is the deepest level of discount you can possibly get. And then uh, you just add the, the, the quantity that you'd like. You select any other items that you're thinking about, add them to the cart. And once you uh, click add to cart for the final time, you're going to see this come up at the top of the screen. It's going to show your items and your, your, um, the total that you're at so far. <coughs> Pardon me. And then uh, you just click view cart in the upper right and that'll take you to your cart. Uh, take a close look here at the upper right. That blue box shows that you're getting free shipping. You're eligible for free shipping on this order because it's over $100. That little yellow box shows that you've got the preferred customer membership on your order that gives you the deepest levels of discounts for the next six to 12 months. And then below that, you've got the, the items that have been selected. I just, for the exercise here, I selected nine quarts of the signature series, but that brings us up over $100 for the free shipping. We're saving $34.20. $34 and if you're ready to, to finish, you click checkout now, and that takes you uh, to this screen here. If you haven't signed up, with an Amsoil account at this point, just click in the lower right to create an account, create a new account. It's going to ask you for some basic information, a name and those types of things. Now let's take a closer look. You'll see this gray shaded box. This is a very important box. This is going to ask you if someone has referred you to Amsoil. And if so, please enter my name. My name is Mike Lapierre. It's spelled right there on the screen for the correct spelling. And also the referral number, 304-555-94. That's how um, you make sure that Rob and I get credit for this. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I have signed up for Amsoil under Rob. So when you order using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. So if you enjoy these podcasts that we're doing, this is a wonderful way to support the podcast because when you order uh, using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. And the commissions I make go directly toward offsetting the cost of doing this pod these podcasts. So I thank you in advance for that, for using my referral number. I very much appreciate it. Uh, and once you've done that, you just go into the next screen to enter your payment information and you're done. Now, once you've entered, once you've placed your order that's over $100, uh, and that, that order includes your Amsoil Preferred Customer Program, you are now eligible to get a free DVD from myself. 
Now, this is going to be either a muscle car DVD or a vintage snowmobile DVD. Uh, use the email address on the screen, WKSpodcasts at gmail.com. Send me an email. Let me know which email. I'm sorry. Let me know which DVD you would like me to send you, the muscle car or the uh, uh, vintage snowmobile DVD, and I'll get that right out to you. As you're typing in that, that email in the subject line, be sure and type in capital letters, free DVD requests, so it stands out as I'm checking my email, and we'll get that right out to you. So I guess the last thing, Rob, that we wanted to talk about is uh, if someone is considering Amsoil as a business opportunity. Um, yeah, yes. If anybody has a retail or a commercial account and they would like to buy directly from Amsoil, just send Mike a line. He'll show you how to set up and you can buy directly from Amsoil. But if you are interested in starting your own part-time business, a part-time business that can grow into a full-time income, Mike and I will show you the Amsoil marketing plan. Amsoil has a large selection of products that cover almost every application. So it doesn't matter if you're into snowmobile, boating, or ATV, or, or hot rods. We have an oil for every application. It's a fun type business that I really enjoy doing. Where else can I go and have fun and make money doing it? And Mike and I are here to help you all the way along if you need any help on how to promote or, or to find new accounts. We're here to help you. For sure, for sure. So when you sign up under that, uh, that number, this 304-555-94, you're getting Rob and I as a team. Now, Rob has been doing AMSO for 40 years. Can you believe that? 40 years. So he knows every aspect of this business, and he knows all of the ins and outs of the products. So he'll be able to help you with any kind of product questions or any kind of questions to show you the different business models that you can do with AMSO. And then the other thing that you get when you sign up under me is I've got a strong background in social media. So if you need some coaching on how to generate Amsoil leads using Facebook and YouTube, I'm happy to coach you with that when you sign up under Rob and I. Uh, you get both of us as a team uh, to help you, to coach you, to support you, whatever you need to get you, get you off and running with this business and having fun with it. Like Rob said, it's enorm an enormous amount of fun. If you're like Rob and I and you enjoy going to any kind of you know boat shows, car shows, motorcycle shows, snowmobile shows, anything with a motor, you like going to those shows, those events, those races, this is a great way to turn that into a, 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 a income opportunity for you. Yes, yes. And just by wearing my AMSO hat at one of these events, people come up and ask me about AMSO. People, people don't know where to buy it, and I'm there to help them show them where they can buy the product. Perfect, perfect. Well, cool, cool. Well, this is great. Uh, any final thoughts, Rob, before we wrap it up? AMSO is a fun business. AMSO has been around since 1968. You know, it was the first synthetic oil to be AI approved. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's very early in the game, too, isn't it? Yes. For sure. Well, good. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for viewing. Hopefully, we've gotten you excited, as excited as we are about the Amsoil products. We'd love it if you could, enjoy, if you could join us either uh, as someone who uses the Amsoil products or to join the Amsoil team uh, as a business opportunity. And we thank you so much for viewing. Have okay. a great day. You have a good day.